It's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done it better. The credit belongs to the person who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred with blood and sweat and dust, who at the best, in the end, knows the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, he fails daring greatly. So the moment that I read that, I closed my laptop, and this is what shifted in me. Three huge things. First, it is not about winning, it's not about losing, it's about showing up and being seen. The second thing, this is who I want to be. I want to show up and be seen in my work and in my life. And if you're going to show up and be seen, there is only one guarantee, and that is you will get your ass kicked. That is the guarantee. That's the only certainty you have. If you're gonna go in the arena and spend any time in there whatsoever, especially if you've committed to creating in your life, you will get your ass kicked. So you have to decide at that moment, I think for all of us, if courage is a value that we hold, this is a consequence. You can't avoid it. The third thing, which really set me free, is kind of a new philosophy about criticism, which is this. If you're not in the arena also getting your ass kicked, I'm not interested in your feedback. <laughs> Period. That's it. You know, I, I, you know, if you have constructive information, feedback to give me, I want it. And you know, I'm an academic, I'm hardwired for wrestling around with stuff like that. If you say, hey, you forgot all this literature, or hey, you should have done this, or terrible sentence construction over here, like, let's go, let's, let's do it. I love that. But if you're in the cheap seats, not putting yourself on the line and just talking about how I could do it better, I'm in no way interested in your feedback. Everything I'm about to say, you already know it's true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. All right, my brothers and the few sisters I have in here. Before I get started, let me say something. This is the kind of topic that I really wanted to do when I started this YouTube channel. You know, I like to talk more on a philosophical base on things, you know what I'm saying? I, I really hate doing petty type of kind of talks, um, talking about petty things. But this is deep. This Teddy Roosevelt man in arena speech, it is the perfect example of what make men like me what we are. It also explains all of y'all fallacies about the 2080 rule that 20% of men sleep with 80% of the women so you shouldn't even try. It's not even true, it's bullshit. It's just that 20% of the men try. That's what's happening. It's just that the, there is a very small percentage of men that actually get out there and try to pursue a woman if that's what they want. If you don't want a woman, don't pursue a woman. But if a woman is what you want, you should go after that. But it's very few men that are willing to put themselves out there and get rejected and get denied. You know what I'm saying? Get their feelings hurt or whatever happens to you. You know what I'm saying? It's very few men that get out and do that. But those men that try end up with the women. Because then it becomes a numbers game. If he's trying and 80% of men are not, think about it now. If 20% are trying and 80% are not, that's a whole lot of women out there for these dudes to get. So these dudes are not special. They're just trying. I never thought that I was a special dude, man. All the women I've dated and stuff, man. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm girl crazy. I'm girl crazy. I mean, I, I see a chick I like. It was like a, it's like I zoomed in on a bitch, bro, and just whoop, you know what I'm saying? I went after. No other thoughts went through my mind. I see this bitch, man, I like that chick, man. Oh, she looking good. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah, I got shot down a lot of times, man. Struck out a lot of times. But I kept swinging that bat. I kept swinging the bat, bro. 
And now we are the age now where we have all of these people online that are critics, like the illustration behind me. You know, you have all these critics, you have all these talkers, but you have very few doers. Very few men get out here and try to put whatever belief you have, try to put it to the test. I've been challenging you dudes since I started this YouTube channel to go outside, to go look at the world around you because I'm listening to the things that your critics and talkers are saying. And I'm telling you as a doer that the real world does not match what they're saying. They can sit back and criticize men who got women for how they are in their relationships, but these men got a woman. These men are happy with their lives. You can criticize Russell Wilson all you want, but unless he says he's not happy, I assume he is. I assume he is, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, sitting back talking about him, sitting back talking about Tia Maury, sitting back talking about uh, 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 Tom Brady, sitting back talking about any of these so-called stars or entertainers or athletes, sitting back talking about their life is not doing anything for your life. What are you doing for yourself? When are you going to get out there and actually do? And then dudes come in my comment section and criticize me. Nigga, I'm a doer. In fact, I've done already. You can't criticize me, bro. You can't talk my life away. You can't talk and change my experiences. You can't thumb down my video and change my experiences. You can't do it. You can't leave a negative comment in my comment section and change my experiences. Because the bottom line is I'm a doer. I've taken my licks in life. I've taken my L's. And each time I've taken an L, I came back for more. Came back for more. If I tried something and failed, I tried again. If I wanted to do it, I tried. When I got off into music, nobody knew how to play instrument. You got some, you know, exceptional people that just seem to know how to do shit without no kind of training. I don't know. Can't explain that. But everybody else, if you're normal like me, you got to fucking practice. When I first picked up that trumpet, I had to practice. Then I went from playing trumpet to mellophone to French horn. You know what I mean? It, it, it Baritone. I mean, you got to learn this stuff, man. And you got to want to learn it. I played three sports in school. Very good. Baseball, football, and basketball. I was kind of small for football, so I didn't really start. But basketball and football was good. I was good. But I'm telling you, man, you got to get good at stuff by practicing. You don't just walk out there on that court and, and be good. I was undersized in playing football, and I still I, I made a team. Small as fuck, but I kept playing. I kept trying. Catching hair lap practice in the bullpen, getting ran over. I kept trying. I didn't quit, bruh. Every time a dude would run, a big old dude run over me, I would get back, line up, and, and, and go again. While people are standing around watching me, this little bitty dude in high school. I was small, but I know y'all look at me now and think I was, I was, no, I was small in school. I was a little bitty dude when I was young, man. You know, got this little bitty dude that keep coming back for more. But I was like that in the streets, man. Again, I was small. Almost 90% of the fights I had coming up, man, was, was against people bigger than me. And you know what, bro? Real talk. If a motherfucker beat me off, I ain't feel like I beat him. I came back for seconds. Yeah. Give a fuck how big he was. I'm coming back for more, bro. And if I can't get you the second time, now I'm about to cheat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to some extreme measures now. You know what I'm saying? But the point is, I kept coming back, bro. And these fights took place in public spaces in front of people girls watching but i never got beat up now don't get me wrong I, I i was i was i was pretty nice with my hands i never got beat up but i fought dudes that were way bigger than me man i just caught hell i mean i caught hell but i'll be i'll be all fucked up after the fight bro but i mean but i got my shit in though you know so i got my licks in and if i felt like i didn't do justice if i felt like i wasn't satisfied with the results man next time i seen that nigga it was on again bro i'm charging him bro because I am that man in the arena. If Teddy Roosevelt meant the man in the arena is the man actually in on the ground floor fighting, right? If he, if that's what he meant by it, the man in the arena was the man down there fighting. I am the actual man in the arena. Y'all are the spectators, man. 
Y'all are spectators in life. And I'm trying to tell you right now, stop being a spectator and be a doer. Stop being a talker. Be a doer. Stop trying to criticize everything that everybody else do. Be a doer. You know, look, when I did that video talking about Jason Black when he interviewed the DOC and how the DOC made him look bad on his own on, on his own station, I had a dude, a Jason Black uh, fanboy, come to my comment section talking about how do you feel Jason lost that debate when the, when DOC couldn't even answer the question? Has he ever met a no good woman? And I said, DOC did answer that question. He said, it's not his place to judge, critic. It's not his place to judge how somebody else do life. That's the words of a nigga that do himself. See, that's the mentality of the alpha. See, the DOC put himself out there. He was a rapper. He went for what he wanted to do. He made it, right? He signed up with NWA and everybody, bro. Pretty good rapper, too, until he had that accident and lost his voice. I mean, excellent lyricist, bro. But the point is, he put himself out there. He did. He put himself in a place where y'all talkers and critics had something to talk about and criticize. But he wasn't the one talking. He wasn't the one criticizing. He was the one doing. So you got a choice, bro. You could either be the one doing or you could be the one talking and criticizing. I'd rather be the one doing. Because in the end of the day, the doer has the life experiences. At the end, the doer has something to look back on and laugh about. The doer has something to look back on and smile about. Got some things to cry about. He got some L's he can look at. The doer got some regrets. He got it all. But what y'all doing is y'all looking for safety and guarantees in life. There are none. There are none. Sitting in the stadiums talking about the people that are living, talking about how they live in their life, that is not living, my brothers. That is not living, my sisters. Sisters, y'all got to silence the noise. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do that video. I'm going to make it a video series. Y'all got to silence the noise. Get everybody out of your ear. You live your life the way you want to live it. Because if you wanted to live your, if you live your life the way you want to, you would not be doing what feminists want you to do. Same thing with you brothers. If y'all lived your lives and stopped being so afraid of, of worrying about how you look getting shot down or how you look if you get divorced or something, you know, shit happens, bro. Shit happens, man. And y'all waiting for tomorrow, but tomorrow is not guaranteed for none of us. For none of us, bro. No man knows when that day comes. We are all living literally on borrowed time, man. We don't know when it's hitting. So while you are living, you're supposed to be living. Not sitting back trying to criticize those that are living. Not sitting back gossiping about those that are living. This is why I don't watch reality TV, bro. I've never watched a reality show. I mean, not none of them. I mean, I, I, I know rappers have had shows. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't watch that stuff, but because I ain't trying to sit there and watch nobody else live their life. I got my own stuff to go do. I got my own business to attend to. I got my own goals to try to pursue. Like what I'm doing right now on YouTube. I'm doing. My channel is slow. It's growing, but it's slow because I got a lot of opposition. A lot of people come on my channel, like they see like the thumbnail or the, or the title. They click it on thinking I'm about to talk shit. They think I'm about to be a critic. They think I'm about to be a talker. And when they realize I'm not about to be talking about nobody else's life, like dogs and criticizing people for how they live their life, they get mad and click off the video and thumb down the video and stuff. But I don't care. I don't care because those are not the kinds of people I want. Slowly but surely, I am still meeting my audience. You can't stop this, bruh. You can't stop it because I'm a doer. I'm going to I'm gonna do my job here. I don't need a, 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 a 10,000 subscribers and all that stuff to do my job. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to help at least one brother, at least one sister. And when I do that, I've done my job. So you can criticize all you want. You can talk about the music in the background all you want. You can talk about, you know, the style of my videos all you want. It don't matter. Because the truth of the matter is, I know what I'm talking about. Because I'm a doer. I know what it's like to put yourself out there in front of everybody. With everybody eyes on you, hoping you fail. Sometimes you fail. Most of the time, I succeeded. The only difference between me and a lot of you dudes is that I actually tried. 
That's the only difference. It's not that I'm better than y'all, bro. It's not that, you know, I, I had some kind of other advantages over y'all. What made me an alpha, bro, is that I pursued it. I, I, I allowed myself to rise within a certain mindset, a certain consciousness, a certain awareness of, 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 the, of the reality that I'm living in. And I embraced it. Instead of running away from uh, challenges, I embraced them. Instead of being afraid of failure, I embraced it. That's what made me different, bro. You know how many, most of y'all catch, I'm about to say you know how many, but I can't say how many. Most of you dudes, I, I, let me say it like this here. I've met so many younger dudes over the last 20 years that have never done anything in school, never played sports, never was in any type of organizations. I mean, nothing competitive, but you got spectators watching you. So a lot of you dudes don't even know what it's like to be the man in the arena. Y'all don't know what it's like to have people booing while you walk out on the field trying to do your thing, hoping that you fail. Y'all don't know what it's like, man. Somebody hit a pop fly over there in your field. You know what I'm saying? You run up on it and you can hear the people, huh? miss it, miss it, drop it, drop it, yo, 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 you know. Or when you go to bat, you got all these motherfuckers behind you. Swing, nigga, swing, swing, what the fuck are you gonna miss? You gonna strike out, you gonna strike out. And you sit there trying to concentrate while this motherfucker's throwing fucking curveballs at you, you know what I'm saying? You trying to stay in the pocket to hit this shit, hoping it break. Y'all don't know what it's like, bro. Uh, you know, playing a competitive sports a sport teaches you a lot about life man about yourself it builds character because not everybody's going to be rooting for you you're going to have people rooting against you you're going to have people in them stands that want to see nothing more than you fail floyd mayweather jr made a billion dollars in boxing off of people rooting against him hoping that he would fail paying big money to see him lose a fight time and time and time and time again and he kept going in there fighting all the dudes they wanted him to fight and he beat their asses he beat them all he kept proving them wrong but the one thing about floyd that they never talk about was his work ethic floyd refused to give his haters the satisfaction of seeing him lose so he trained and trained and trained the dude would go to a nightclub have a night out. He didn't drink though. Didn't drink, didn't smoke. He would go hang out with some girls or whatnot. And after the club, somebody else would drive his car and he would jog home. That is dedication, bro. When y'all see the people that are good at things or good in life, that's because they try. I was good with women because I like women. So I studied them. I paid attention to them. The first thing I understood that they, I didn't own them, that they are not my property. I gave him human respect. And then I sat back and watched. I sat back and observed. I got to understand what they what they like and don't like. Not that I tailored myself according to them. I was already what I was. But the truth of the matter is, that's the point. If you don't tailor yourself and just be what you are, you'll get a woman. You can't get a woman like you are because you're trying to play a game. Nah, it ain't no game. It's not about trickery. It's not about fooling them. Because you can only keep up the shenanigans so long. Sooner or later, your real self is going to have to come out. So why not let your real self be seen from the jump? And let the people who like you for the way you are come towards you. And y'all meet up and y'all hook up. Y'all gravitate towards each other. That's all I did, bro. That's all I did. And I kept trying and trying and trying. But most importantly... I pursued the women that I liked. Yeah. I pursued them. I mean, and, 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 and it paid off. Did I get every bad chick that I wanted? No. But I reached the point in my life where I was so good at women that I was turning women away. I mean, the sorts of women that most dudes would slice their wrist to get, to get a shot at, I was turning them away because I had so many women in rotation. And this is not bragging. I'm sharing. I'm trying to get y'all to understand the difference between the man in the arena, the doer, versus the ones who just sit there and talk and criticize. Don't be that person, bro. Don't be that man that sit back and criticize other people for how they do life. Let everybody do it the way they want to do it. Let everybody pursue their way of being the way they think they should. 
Don't criticize it. And don't gossip about them. Let them do what they do. Let them be how they are. You need to focus on you, man. This thing is about being selfish. But most importantly, don't be afraid to be seen, man. Don't be afraid to have the, the naysayers watching you move. Don't be afraid to have the people rooting against you, hoping you fail. Don't worry about that. You get out there and do. And if you fail, you know what you can say? At least I try. Didn't Jay-Z have a verse with that too? I'm telling you, bro. I can actually teach this whole YouTube journey of Jay-Z lyrics. He got a verse where he said, try to put your dogs in it. Ten and a half, four minutes and a half. I bet that stops all the grinning and the laughs when you play the game of life and the winning in the bag. What he's saying is that for the, for the talkers and critics, that's easy. But you come on out here. You come on out here and you try to put yourself in it. You try to play this game. And see how you feel when you realize that the win is not guaranteed to you. Like they told you coming up. Keep your nose clean. Go to college. You're going to be okay. How that's working out for you. How that's working out for you. So you didn't fall, you, you look, you didn't set back all your other goals and things that you wanted because you thought that if you take this direction, this route, everything else is going to be easy. And now you find yourself late 30s or early 30s, however, you know what I'm saying? And, and you realize, man, it's not happening the way they said it was going to happen. That's because you was lied to. You was lied to from the jump. So now that you're playing the game of life, you realize the winning, you realize the win is not in the bag already. You don't have this thing in the bag. So what you do, you turn into a critic now. You turn into a talker. Instead of you saying to yourself, you know what? They got that. They lied to me. They got that. Now let me switch up and let me try this this way. Because that's what I'd have did. That's exactly what I would have done. That's all I'd have done. I'd have been like, okay, that didn't work. So let me switch up my, my, my methods. Let me try this here. That's exactly what I, would have, what I would have done. In fact, I did it with this YouTube channel. When I first started this channel, I, I decided I was trying to bring in a men. And my, my, my goal was to try to get you dudes from under the spell of the red pill slash manuscript um, type community, right? MGTOW and all that stuff. Because, I mean, yeah, they say they for men, but all they doing is talking and criticizing. Come on, man. This teaching here. This teaching here, bro, all they're doing is talking and criticizing. They don't have a single solution. Their answer to everything is for you to live in fear. Don't even try because women ain't right. To hell with that, bro. How many times have y'all heard me say, y'all can keep that bullshit. If there's an island where there's nothing but women at, put me on that fucking island. That's where I want to be. I don't care how much of a headache they are. Put me where the women are. I don't want to be around all men with that's some gay shit. Fuck I won't be around all men for because women are hard to deal with. I'll just go deal with what's hard to deal with. And I ain't about to be around. And that's y'all mentality. So y'all better just have this, this male society with nothing but men around. You know what I'm saying? Because women are hard to deal with. But, but so we y'all start sleeping with each other? I mean, excuse me for getting hyped, man, but I don't understand the mentality. What's the answer? Start screwing each other? Come on, bro. Think about what y'all be saying, man. Get out there and live your life. But me, I've never been afraid to just get out. I'm going to just deal with them. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. So when I first started the YouTube channel, I wanted to pull y'all away from that. So I tried to come up with this concept of Alpha MGTOW. Look at some of my very early videos, Alpha MGTOW. But it didn't work. Because I just got accused of not understanding what MGTOW mean. How the fuck I don't understand what MGTOW mean when MGTOW was actually created because of men like me. I am the man that actually went his own way. MGTOW is not just about women. It's just about a man being a man. Pursuing your own path. Going your own way in life. Doing your own thing. I actually did that. So how in the hell I don't understand what it mean. You know, you niggas that's sitting online talking about what other people doing and criticizing people who try and fail y'all the ones who don't understand what it mean so i try to pull these dudes in and it didn't work i, I got told i don't know what i'm talking about i don't understand migtow i don't understand red pill i don't understand it i understand it all problem is y'all don't understand it because y'all not doers i'm the man in the arena bro 
I'm the dude down there slinging, swinging the gladiator swords and the axes. I'm not the dude sitting up there where it's safe. I'm the dude down here losing limbs. I'm the dude down here, you know, getting hacked up. So when I walk out that arena, if I'm still intact, and, 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 and they throw beautiful women at me, then dudes like you get mad. Why are you mad at me? Are you willing to go through what I went through to get these women? Are you willing to get shot down like I was willing to get shot down to get these women? Are you willing to try to meet a woman, make yourself vulnerable and, you know, try to build a relationship with this woman and have it fail and blow up in your face? I took that chance. I had a polygynous family with three women that I cared about, I love. They're no longer, two of them is no, no, no longer with me. I don't care. I mean, it's life. Shit happens. But I try. And when it, when it was good, if you asked me when it was good, could I imagine a day when we wouldn't be together? I would have said no. I couldn't see it because it was good. But you never know what's going on in somebody else's head. That's the thing about dealing with other human beings. You never really know what's, what was, what's brewing up inside of another person. But the thing is, I'm not afraid to find out. I will put myself out there every time. I will pursue what I like every time. I will pursue that which makes me happy every time. And if I don't accomplish my goals, if I fail, I just fail, bro. I'm just gonna fail trying. So all you dudes that sit around and criticize people, man, know this, man, like that woman said, if you're not in this arena with me, I don't even give a damn about what you got to say. If you ain't willing to try, bro, I don't give a fuck about what you got to say. What, your criticism means nothing to me, bro. Because you are too scared to even try. You, you too much of a chicken shit to even get out here and try to live your own life. You sit in the dude talking about I'm using music for protection. And there's niggas like that that sit at the safety behind a, a burner account on YouTube that probably, that, that's probably scared to go out and live his own life. Man, I live my own life, bro. And I lived it well. And I've enjoyed my life. Yeah, I've been shot a few times. I've been stabbed. I've been hit with all kinds of shit. I've been in prison. But guess what? If I had to do it all again, I wouldn't change a damn thing, man. Because these experiences gave me a life that I that, that I can look back on and say, hey, bro, I had a life. I had a journey. I wouldn't change it, people. That's the thing y'all understand. I wouldn't change it. None of it, bro. Because it, 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 it was... It was a, I had a life that was worth living. The only thing that, that I can do right now to make the ending better than, than the rest of it is somehow get rich. And since I'm not really interested in getting rich, because I've been, I ain't going to say rich, but I've been very, very, very well off twice. So since I've been there and done that too, I'm not really chasing that. So really right now, the only thing I got left is to complete this mission here on YouTube to save one man, one woman. That's all. One brother, one sister. If I can help one brother, one sister see their way through this shit, you know, if I, if I could be the light in the tunnel for one brother, one sister, I've done my job. Y'all can hate on me all y'all want, bro, but I'm, but this the realest content y'all got on YouTube. Y'all don't have nobody on YouTube that can talk like I talk because most of these dudes ain't did what I did. Most of these dudes ain't seen what I seen. They ain't been where I've been. They too scared of failure. I'm not scared of failure. And let me go back to that point about the sports. I, I, I kind of summed it up how that gives you character and everything, but it's odd, man, and meeting so many youngsters that have never played anything, any type of competitive sport in their life. That's odd, bro. That's odd. And that's why so many of y'all are so scared of failure, bro, because y'all never had to do nothing when you had to actually compete. You know, when you play sports, first thing you got to do is make the team. That's the first thing. I mean, whether it's gymnastics, it don't matter. First thing you got to do is make the team. Band, you know, I mean, band is not a sport, but you got to make the band. If you just don't play well enough to make the band, you're not going to make the band. And the better you are, the better marching position you get. You know, the best players in the band are on the ends because everybody can hear them. And guess what, Brother Kush marched at? On the motherfucking end. Yeah, yeah, that's right. On the end. Yeah, 
So when I came down Canal Street of St. Charles, my family and friends was able to actually touch me. Take a quick picture of me. Because little Kush coming down that bitch stepping, stepping hard, blowing his ass off. Because I practice. I train. I wanted to be the best musician I could be, and I accomplished that. I wanted to get good at sports. I accomplished that. I like women. I accomplished that. I started a business. Business blew up. I accomplished that. I married well. I accomplished that. I got five children and five grandchildren. I accomplished that. And through all my ups and downs, bruh, I have no regrets whatsoever because I was not afraid to get out here and actually do it. That's what make life worth living, bruh. Sitting online in fear of a failure is not a way to be, my brothers. All my sisters. Sisters, y'all need to get all these people out your ear. Pursue your life the way you want to pursue it. Because the truth of the matter, if sisters was to act the way they want to act, all this shit they doing, they wouldn't do because that's not in them to do. That's not in them to do. That's not their nature. They are fighting against their nature to conform to ideology. And the same thing you brothers are doing, except the only thing different is you brothers are just scared. Y'all are paralyzed by fear. You're too afraid to get out there and try to do something because you don't know how it's going to turn out. So because you don't know, you just don't do anything. You just sit there. Nah, but I ain't sitting there. I'm going to get out here and try. If I fail, you can laugh at me all you want. But guess what? I got out here in the game and I try. Y'all can sit back and criticize. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can sit back and, and make mockery of me. I don't care because I got out here and played. A lot of these dudes that get lucky on YouTube channels blew up. They make a little money off of y'all. You got to understand that. They, they, they didn't win in life. They made money by being little bitch boys and y'all supported them because they are, they are placating to your emotions. Nah, bro. I'm not here to try, try to, you know, I'm not here to try to, you know, play into your emotions at all. I'm trying to play into your intelligence. I'm trying to let you hear something and see something in a man that's real for a change so that you can hear what I'm trying to tell you and make your adjustments. And if you have any questions, I'm here for you. Same thing with the sisters. I'm here for you. If you want to make adjustments, I'm here for you. But I can tell you one thing. If y'all was to live y'all lives for just you, if you were to be selfish, you wouldn't be moving the way you're moving, sisters. And my brothers, if y'all wasn't so scared, bruh, of failure, so scared of being laughed at. Y'all, you see, y'all attack people so much online and criticize people so much online that y'all scared that y'all might be the next one on there. But you know what, bro? I don't even give a fuck. Let me be the next one on y'all lips. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't care, bro. Because at least I try. Brothers, y'all got to think more like me, man. Get out here and try, man. Get out here and try. Don't be a talker. Don't be a critic. Get out here and try. Because the truth of the matter is, the people like me, you can't talk about us and hurt our feelings, man. And, 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 and before I close... That's the point I've been trying to make the whole time about you dudes ragging on all these women that's on YouTube and shit and Instagram. Like, y'all talking about these women, but these women are living their best life. You are not hurting these women, bro. These women are living exactly the way they want to live, and you're sitting back criticizing her for doing shit that she is enjoying. Yeah, they got ups and downs. They got pitfalls. So when they have a stumble, y'all sit back and laugh and stuff. But them girls get right back up and keep living. All these dudes y'all talk about on, on YouTube. Them, the sort of men y'all talk about. Especially them pookies. Them niggas doing their thing. They doing their thing. They smashing better looking women than y'all. They smashing and smashing better looking women. And since the, the definition y'all have of a pookie is so broad, we never really know what kind of man y'all talking about. It could be any man from some little norfo thug with his pants hanging off his ass in the streets to a nigga like me and everything in between. Since the definition is so broad, then I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just keep it broad. Pookie is doing his thing. He's winning. He's winning. 
Y'all can't sit online and criticize Pookie's life away. Y'all can't sit online and talk his reality away. The dude is living his life. He's doing his thing. He's smashing and dashing these fucking beautiful girls. He's doing his thing. While you are sitting in fear. Now, I know this is a conversation that a lot of y'all done already clicked on. I know a lot of y'all already got mad at me because y'all don't want to hear this shit. But this is the kind of talk that alpha males need to have. And for the sisters that's here, it's cool because it's for you too. Just switch up. You know what I'm saying? It's the same message. Just switch it up, you know? But the sisters don't live in fear. Now, I get the sisters one thing. They're not living in fear. Maybe some of the more, more bougie ones do, but even them, they, they get out there and have their fun. You know, they don't really live in fear. Their, their main problem is that their ideologies mess them up. They're so, they're so tied to their beliefs that, it, that, that that's what paralyzes them, not fear. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you brothers, what paralyzes y'all is fear. Fear of failure. Don't be that man. Don't be that man. I'm going to stop there, but I ain't going to go on because I'll be trying to really... I really want to keep these videos short, man, but, you know... Once, once this shit come off, man, you start getting it off, you got to get it off, you know what I'm saying? But for those that want to support the channel, listen, man, the best way to support the channel is simple. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon when they, you know, so you get more notifications when I release um, other videos. That's the best way. If you want to throw me five bucks to help me better my setup or, 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 you know, take care of my other things that I need to take care of so I can continue to do this and continue to grow and thrive and just get better, and start doing these live seminars, you know, where I don't want to charge y'all. I want to be able to come out to your city and cover all expenses myself, but I'm going to need your help to do things like this here. So you want to throw about a few bucks to do that. Venmo at the Black Alpha, Cash App at the Black Alpha, PayPal at RealBlackAlpha at gmail.com. You see it on the screen right there. So on that note, don't worry about the Patreon. It is coming. I know I keep saying it. It's coming. Believe me, I'm working on it. It's coming. So on that note, I'm going to close out now, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to call it a day. I think I said everything I need to say. So, I'm out. Let me find my outro. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Alpha. Salam.